Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Joe Pavelka, and I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, so I am an associate professor at Mount Royal University in the uh, brand new, and we've had a phys ed degree for quite some time, but now it's a completely revised degree program, and it is the Bachelor of Health and Physical Education. And, uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about that just when I wrap up. But um, when, I, when I first spoke to Megan about, about doing this thing, I was um, uh, somewhere in Europe, and I've been in Europe for the last four months, and I just got back not 48 hours ago, so these are all the clothes that I could find actually right now. So, so, so I'm here, and, and appropriately so, I want to talk a little bit about uh, leisure and wellness from an from a international global perspective and make just a couple of points, two, three points, and then I want to bring it back home to here. I've also done, um, I spent 10 years with the City of Calgary in the old Calgary Parks and Recreation world, and I finished up there as, as a, um, assistant director way back in 2000, and I've been with Matt Royal ever since, and I do lots of other projects around. So I, I tend to... Um, no, I have a pretty good understanding of what goes on here in Calgary, and a lot of my work uh, now is a little more global. So I want to make about three or four very, very quick points. The first point, and it's a little bit obvious, is that leisure and wellness are, are tied together. That's obvious, but I want you to think a little bit about, no, think about leisure a little bit differently. It's not just that time left over, it's not just going to the gym, it's not, it's not just that. Leisure is really about lifestyle. It's about lifestyle and identity. Leisure today is understood to be crafting a lifestyle. Wellness is very, very much a part of that lifestyle. Um, and sometimes we even uh, sort of refer to that as being life politics. How do you want to live your life? A purposeful kind of life. When we go around the world, one of the things we notice, obviously, is that leisure and wellness is very different in different places around the world. Well, how is that informed? It's culturally informed, but how is that informed? Is it, is it just cultural? Is it regional? Is it, is it based on that urban-rural split that we often talk about, um, which is absolutely crucial? Or is it something else? And a lot of us now are starting to say it's, it's probably a little bit different. Uh, it's probably based on, probably one of the best predictors is how fast-paced and harried a society is relative or in, in comparison to how slow a society is. And this is really important because this is what we understand. We understand that a very, very fast-paced society, harried society, has leisure and wellness separate from themselves. A slower-paced society has leisure and wellness embedded in, in daily life. Now, this is not to just talk about extremes, you know, to, you go to some village in some mountain in Peru or you know, something like that. It's, it's about taking a very realistic perspective, a very realistic perspective. And the key question is, how embedded is leisure and wellness in everyday life? That's the key question. And there are many implications to that. If it's not embedded, if you are at that end of the, of the, of the spectrum, leisure and wellness tends to be very institutional. And we heard previous speakers here talking about the importance of community. And I think that that's absolutely wonderful that the whole community comes in, et cetera. And I'm not, I'm not here necessarily to advocate that this is great or this is great, but I, but I do want to throw out some, some, um, some observations. And when you have a society where leisure and wellness is completely separate, people tend to be asleep at the wheel. And they go to the doctor when they have to. And they, and they go to the, to the leisure center when they have to. Do you know, I, I have to tell you, after, after um, I do most of my work in Latin America, all over, all over South America, but I spent the last four months in, in Europe doing a lot of research, and it was research. And uh, <laughs> olives and wine can be a part of research, okay, very much, okay. And, you know, and it's interesting, and I've come to this conclusion that the, that the most important uh, leisure and wellness, leisure and wellness amenity in the world is a bicycle. It's a bicycle, and if you go around the world, and if you've, if you've been all over the place, you know, you realize that that bicycle is a part of leisure and wellness. And in most places around the world, there are literally millions of cyclists on the road, and, they, and it's very much embedded in, in, in everyday life. It's about how we eat, it's about how we socialize, it's about how we recreate, it's about all of those things. Now, here's my third point. My third point is that 
It's easy to say, oh, you know what, in a collectivist society it's slow, in an individualistic society it's fast, but it's really not that simple. What we find is that there are, there are fast-paced, harried parts of the world in Southeast Asia, in Latin America, in all sorts of places. So there's a little bit of a shift going on. And the basic question is, if you want to be a part of this economic, global economic community, then you better get rid of that siesta of yours, and you better work a good 12 hours a day. And that's changing around the world. It's changing a lot of cultures around the world. The interesting thing about that is that here in, in, in North America, the West, which is traditionally the hub of all things fast-paced and harried, um, we're starting to see a little bit of a change especially within that millennial group and certainly other groups as well that are starting to come uh, forward and demand a more seamless existence. They don't really want that 12 hour, uh, you know, 60 hour week. They want a more seamless existence where work and leisure and everything else is actually much more blended. So I'm going to close off a little bit on, on um, you know, what's the challenge? You know, what can you think of here? I've been involved in lots of projects about trying to imagine a future 30 years into the future, 20 years, whatever it is. And I want to throw it out to you, which is really the most basic question, which is, which is where do you want to live and how do you want to live? And one of the great things about Calgary, and this has been told to me a number of times, but it was absolutely confirmed when I went to Europe and I started to talk to all of these planners and all these people. And the bottom line is, you know, a place like Europe is, is absolutely great. But it's done. It's done. There's not a lot of crazy planning that's going to be going on in Europe, especially within the larger cities. And they're the first people to tell you that. And we have a lot of great minds coming from Europe here. And why are they coming to Calgary? They're coming to Calgary for a whole bunch of reasons. But one of the reasons they're here is because Calgary is this open palette. And, and its future in terms of how it's put together and in terms of what we, in terms of how we decide how we want to live is completely up for debate. And it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So that's the one thing that I want to throw for you. And the last plug is Mount Royal University, brand new physical education, um, degree in health and physical education, interdisciplinary degree, four majors, Recreation, sport management, athletic therapy, physical literacy, which is new, and then where I teach, which is ecotourism and outdoor leadership. We are taking a very holistic approach, and, and um, we are, um, we're taking students in this, in this degree starting September of this year. And one of the things that we believe is that everyone needs um, this very broad holistic approach. Therefore, all of our students are going to be taking courses amongst themselves as well. Anyway, I got this nod a number of times, so I'm going to go. Thank you very much. <laughs>